If you think that dropping a bomb or launching a missile is easy, you just have to let them drop. Well, think again. In three minutes. Otis. Problem number one. Collisions. The pressure between a falling weapon and the aircraft is lower, a bit lower, than the pressure below the weapon. In the ideal condition, the weapon may be sucked up and collide with the launcher. I remember when I was at university being shown a video of a winter tunnel of uh, the separation of the AS-37 Martel missile from the Mirage 3. And the missile kept colliding with the Mirage again and again and again. Every time it was launched, it eventually pitched up and hit the launcher again. Well, I suppose that at the end they figured out the correct parameter combination to have a successful separation. Problem number two, loads and vibrations. When you're ejecting a weapon with an ejector rack, the push is actually exerting a transient force on aircraft structure. The structure must be properly designed and sized to bear these loads because they are not as small as they may seem. For example, the F-16 that actually has a very thin and flexible wing tend to bend and vibrate quite a lot when launching air-to-ground weapons. And mind, if the weapon is unguided, the aim may be compromised. Also consider that not all the weapons are launched at the same time, so after you launch the first one, it starts vibrating, and the second one is definitely not in a good place in terms of precision. In another example, the ejectors from the internal base of the Sukhoi 57 caused such a stress on the structure that actually required a partial redesign. And even launching a missile from a rail can cause vibration that may have an effect on the structure. Problem number three, sudden change of flight conditions. The weapon release changes the center of gravity, so the station position and the weapon release sequences must have been designed beforehand to avoid unintended consequences. There is nothing as lethal for an aircraft as a sudden and uncontrolled shift of the center of gravity. Moreover, asymmetric external payloads may have an effect on maneuverability. Problem number four, supersonic separation. At supersonic speed, the weapons to separate from the launcher need to go through a complex system of shock waves. While it goes through the shock waves, the conditions change very rapidly, and the effects on the weapon is a sort of a shaking, a regular shaking that may destabilize the weapon. And obviously, this only increases the risk of collision after the release, particularly from the internal base. Supersonic separation requires long and accurate aerodynamic studies to be correctly designed. It has been debated for some time if the Chinese J-20 actually had the capability of releasing weapons at supersonic speed. Well, it seems to be the case. The same issue on the Suhoi 57 seems to have taken almost seven years of development to be correctly addressed. And since the Suhoi 57 is a very interesting aircraft from this point of view, please watch the videos that are going to appear beside me to understand more about this. Thank you very much for watching and see you there. That wasn't three minutes, sir. It's okay, Otis. Don't, don't be too formal. Humans.